country region, especially in the Kumasi area, after places in the US? Or it, <laughs> it, it came after your time in Kumasi? <laughs> I think it was it is after my time in Kumasi. Mm. My usual Ghanaian pension for affectation. Mm. Affectation, copycatting behaviors elsewhere. And, and, and seriously, not familiar with your own culture, but you are so mm. exuberant about other people's uh, way of life, culture. And mannerisms, mm. being too. Mm. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, it, it's nice to have you on the line. It, it, the last time we had a conversation, we went into it, your own background as an Ashanti yourself and how you understand uh, politics' approach in Kumasi and other areas of the Ashanti region. Now, having that in mind. What then are observations from what happened in uh, Mensha first of all? Because that, that's where it seems that's the most important event yesterday. W what are your observations? Well, Sena, uh, we must always remember that the National Liberation Movement, the United Party, and the current MPP they all have their umbilical cord cut and buried at Mensha. Mensha was the birthplace of the UP tradition. Indeed, the Uchim Falls, Utum Falls chief linguist, Bafua Koto, was the progenitor of the UP tradition. And, uh, if I recall, it's not only the Abrimpo and the sub-chiefs, but all chiefs, apart from a few recalcitrant ones, were made to swear an oath of allegiance to the UP political tradition. Most of the atrocities that occurred in Kumasi, especially in my area of residence, Odro, not Ashanti Newtown. Odro was the area directly opposite the Ahemfie Palace. And in Odro, the residents were all affiliated with Mansia. You had Kenya Sahini number one and two. You had the uh, the Queen Mother's house. You had uh, Nanabos, the brother of Naprem the second, and uh, you had another Nanabos from Jiasi. Uh, he was even arrested and jailed by Kwame Nkrumah during the PTA. Uh, exercise, Prevention Detention Act exercise. Then you had my own paternal house, a do, a do, a do, PDFE. They were all associated one way or the other with the UP tradition. So they were committed. So I wasn't surprised about the way and manner Otum for Osit to the second introduced Napo. And I wasn't surprised about the advice to that Otum for the wise man gave to Napo. The emotional attachment of Mansia to the UP tradition is the umbilical cord. It ties a person around that area to the UP tradition. I recall some time ago going to Kumasi, there, there used to be a helper of uh, both Prempe the Second and Opokuwari called Ajimambedu. 
Naj Mamadou was a good friend of mine. Anytime you see Otumfo, especially when Otumfo is decked in all his uh, finery with the gold on his arm, it was Ajiman Bedu who used to hold the right hand of Otumfo so that the weight of the gold does not uh, affect his hand. That was Ajiman Bedu. Ajiman Bedu told me, Kwabna, Really? That's your and friend. I also recall my own uncle being a ward chairman. And every time I visit Kumasi, he's having an MPP meeting in our family house which was just a stone throw from Mencia. The first house I described was my maternal house. The second house is my maternal house. And I had a third maternal house, which was directly opposite Apejefim. Apejefim is about uh, five, maybe 500 meters from Mencia. Now, I am not surprised at how Utumfo introduced all the accolades that Utumfo hit on Napo. But Napo is no scion of Mencia. There is no royal lineage between Apegefim and Mencia. So this mistake that people make that is a royal of Malaysia must be discarded. He is not. First of all, his relationship is not even maternal to Malaysia. His father was the chief of the Palam Queen Carries, Apaja. That's what it means, Apaja Fim. Apaja Hine. My own grandfather was a school carrier called Yamsporja. Yamso Edge, carrier of stew, the golden stew. And there were three Yamso Edge, so who I know. One was a, a coffee maker, another was a goldsmith. They were all related. So the relationship was a master servant relationship, not a kinship relationship. A Pajafim means the chief of the palanquin carriers. My grandfather was the chief of the stool carriers. We have the Mpapuahini, and we have the <laughs> all kinds of chiefs. It's the honor to the golden stool, to the Mencia palace. Now, I wasn't around when uh, Napo was uh, born. I understand he was born in 1968 or what. I don't know. But I was not around during his upbringing. So I don't know much about Napo. I've met him only once in my whole lifetime. And that was in 2008 when we went to Kumasi to campaign. And I think I had a radio uh, debate with him in one of the FM stations. That was the only time I met Napo for the first time and the last time I've seen him personally. So as to his upbringing and the claim by Otumfo to have paid the school fees and so on and so forth, I contradict Otumfo because I have no knowledge of that. But I know of the functional relationship between Abedifim and Malaysia. What you said was that he is he has you said he has no royal lineage to Malaysia. Yes. No, he doesn't have. But can he be said to be a royal? No, he is not. He may be a royal of Abedifim, but he's not a royal of Mencia. Ah, in the first place, even by clans, you are not. All royal 
Kingdoms of Magia are from a particular clan or are scions of chiefs of Magia, like the children of Prempe the First, Alex and uh, Arnold and uh, Lovelace and so on and so forth. And sometimes they are mixed sub chiefs. But Ashantis are by nature matrilineal. Is that not so? Yes. And as much as some stools can be occupied patrilineally, like the Oyuku stool, it's not all the stools that are inherited patrilineally. Apajafim and Mencia is a master servant relationship just like my own maternal household was a master servant relationship. But you also said Mapo's link to uh, the Apejefie is patrilineal. Why, why was it important yes, that you raised that? Patrilineal. It was, it, was, it was a son of a former Apejahini. Okay. His mother is not... Uh, how shall I say, part of the earth. Well, by marriage, of course, but not by blood. I think this are essentially matrilineal. So his inheritance is on the mother's side, not the father's side? Depending on where you come from. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you are a girl married to an Ashanti man, you... you whose mother was married to an Ashanti man. You may say that my, I, I'm a girl, so my, my, my inheritance is from my dad. Is that not so? Yes. Uh, yes. It's, 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 it's a complex kind of situation, but sometimes the lines are clear for the accurate determination of one's lineage. Hmm. Now, having said that, you said we're not surprised at the comments of the Utum for, but it sounded as if you were not surprised by even the emotional attachments that he seems to have uh, stated in those comments. Um, well, like I said, the umbilical cord of the UP tradition is buried in Malaysia. There is always an emotional attachment, no matter the pretense. And of course, the autumn for is always very condescending. Everybody is his grandchild. Everybody, especially those of us who grew up around Malaysia. I was entitled to eat my lunch at Malaysia every afternoon, two o'clock. I go to the modua. Mm. The, 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 the people who do the cooking, we call them modua for. They always had their hair uh, in corn rolls. And you demand your food, and you get it, and you eat it. You were entitled to eat at Malaysia. That didn't make me a royal of Malaysia. <laughs> but he, he's always very cautious. In the past, when other people have visited him, when President Akufu had visited him, he's cautious not to uh, perhaps uh, throw his weight behind them. Uh, this is the first. This sounds like a, a different tone from him. Ah well, it could be. It could be. But I, I recall, Otum for us nephew, Anal Kusi Ajuma, Okumkom, he's dead. You remember when Kufu came? Kusi Ajuma said. Role is the oil, Madame Fool. Now, what do you mean, Pa? They are they are they are they are ancestry is from Kawe. They are Pejafium people. They come from Kawe. Yes. Uncle 
Kufo's, uh, I don't know whether his cousin or uh, brother, Nana Kufo, who will begin their career in it, was something I used to know very personally. I grew up with all his children. Just like I grew up with the children of Bafua Kuto. Abawa Kuto was my classmate. Likewise, his nephew was Ekwapna, whom I met some time ago in Chicago. And besides, we were the ones who used to search for the empty bottles and deposit them at Bafua Kuto's house for the action to facilitate to say to and blow up people. Really? Yes. Oh, Senna, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. The political history of Ghana, especially political history of Kumasi, is really at my fingertips because I was right in the middle of it. My uncle, maternal uncle, and my grandfather, paternal grandfather, were all world chairman of the There was a, one old man who used to be a, a tenant of my paternal grandfather's house. And he was a staunch follower of NLM, and he was the, more or less, the news bearer, because my paternal grandfather was not very active, mobile, and you come, open your room, your room, your room, it means we won. <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was there very, very young. But all I remember, Opa, you're new, you're new, you're new. Why, was it CBP? No, MPP. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Doc, having said that, and in fact, I hope we, one of these days we have a, some time so we can go back to your own personal history and uh, and how you grew up in Ghana and what you think about Ghana and where Ghana is headed to. But I, w- I won't do a personality profile. In oh, no, 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 not, not at all. Just a, com- a, a, a much more extended conversation <coughs> on the history of Ghana and where do you think we are, we are headed to with everything. Okay. If it's my touch you want, yes, but mm. not my personality. Mm. It's material. That's not what Ghanaians want to know. Mm. Tornado is immaterial. It's what comes from Tornado's mind. Hmm. Well, having said that, with your knowledge of uh, the whole setting, would an Otum for backing change perhaps what people say might be a party in the Shanti region, even if they, they decide not to vote for the NDC, that people suggest that there's a, a sense in which the, the people will not come out and vote. Would the two for saying I back this ticket make things any better for the new patriotic party? Whatever value political capital that could have been gained by the NPP from two fours uh, introduction of Napo and the things he said about him was totally destroyed barely an hour later by Napo himself. Really? How? Arrogance. Arrogance. Character is like pregnancy. You can't hide it. If a person is bad, he's bad. Uh, essentially, he can't change his character. He cannot. Look at what he said yesterday. Even if you believe that a father has administered Ghana better than any other president. You are entitled to it, but to put it your Kwame Nkrumah, your Kwame Nkrumah, what does that mean? Your Kwame Nkrumah, Jesus Christ, that's a blasphemy. Blasphemy? Yes, it's unacceptable. 
The son of Saturn, your Kwame Nkrumah. This man took us out of colonialism into independence. Whatever his fault, he achieved a lot to the point of global recognition as the man of the century in Africa. You can't exhibit your hatred for the man so publicly. Keep it to yourself, but not your Kwame Nkrumah. At least our Kwame Nkrumah would have even sounded a bit better. Your Kwame Nkrumah. That is how the behavior of the UP, UP tradition has been when I was growing up. Ethnic cleansing, ethnocentrism is inbred in the Ashanti politicians. And it will never go away. And Napo is the very epitome, the practical epitome of that kind of behavior orientation, the potistic, tribalistic, ethnocentric. We cannot blame anybody for our ethnicity, but ethnocentrism is a subjective concept while ethnicity is just an objective reality. Now, having said that, uh, and there's a question that comes to mind, but before I ask that question, how far do you think this ticket will go? This what? The tickets. The Napo Baumia tickets. The Napo Baumia tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Self-glorification self-denial of reality. It all terminating in Kumasi. That's as for how far the ticket is going. It will terminate in Kumasi? Yes, it will go nowhere. There is no way Ghanaians with their eyes open will vote another MPP government into office. After eight years of wanton destruction, of this country. Never in the history of this country have we seen such bad governance, such nepotism, such fascism. God. God will have mercy on Ghana if any Ghanaian think of voting this hmm. nightmare back into power this political nightmare that Ghanaians have been undergoing for the past eight years. In the history of this country, since when were eight people killed in an election and the president of the country who swore an oath to treat all Ghanaians as equal, never said a word never said word when a, an MPP member of parliament said they were criminals who were shot God forgive them God have mercy on their souls when they die well doc I, I wanted to conclude them by asking you um, how did somebody who um, saw the history of NLM, in fact, you said you actively part partook in it. How did you then be uh, shift and become? Because now you are in Kruma is largely, and then member of the NDC. What happened? I was not in Kruma is. I was very non-political when I was young, but my sympathy was with, especially when I saw how. People supported CPP, like James Ousu, Sule MB, and others were treated in Kumasi. Like the battles that took place at Dunkirk and Abyss Park. Like the sheer brutal murder of a woman in front of me and my grandmother at Venetia. My sympathies were with Kwame Nkrumah. 
I felt sorry for the CPP that they had to tolerate this kind of barbaric behavior in Ashanti region. It made me dislike the MPP. When I was young, I remember coming from school one day with a, a young pioneer scarf around my neck. That was the only time I had a knock on the head from my <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> he gave me a, a punch. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was his favorite, you know, and yet it was die hard and pity. <laughs> it was die hard. Tati a tea, Tati a tea, Tia Yepe, well, wound and no. Hey, my friend, did I see? <laughs> <laughs> Well, not today, today it sounds so funny, but it was horrible. Hmm. It was really horrible. Thank, thank you for the journey through history today. And I'm, I'm grateful you made time to talk to us this morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Hmm. Dr. Tony Edu is former Ghana ambassador to the Netherlands, joining us on the line, speaking to us this morning. And, of course, he's also from the Ashanti region. And... Like he told you, his background is also royal. Well, uh, thank you very much for staying tuned to your power station, Radio Gold 90.5 FM. And of course, we had, we've been discussing this morning. Now, post-presentation to the uh, Asantihini.